well All these thoughts keep me up at night Yeah, what am I doing? Did I do it right? Yeah, all these thoughts keep me up at night Yeah, I can't think straight, need the light I need to breathe, get me up and out of the sheets Under my feet, another cup of coffee in me That's what I need, my eyes puffy, I can't see I'm too tired to function, but too lost to sleep Ay, I think I need to be on something medication I think I need to figure out the segregation I think I needed just a better education To understand a world that's so complicated Intoxicated, every night faded Just so I can sleep, thinking that it's hated I feel hate Hating others cause you know that they gotta lie Forget that though, you got plenty You're alive in this life, you got time, go get it All these thoughts keep me up at night Yeah, what am I doing, did I do it right? Yeah, all these thoughts keep me up at night And that is my new PC build. Thank you for watching. <laughs> but seriously, this PC build is actually a personal project that I've been wanting to do for the longest time. I just didn't have the time to make it happen until now. In this video, I'm gonna share with you all the components I used, the particular theme for this build, and a few thermal benchmarks between the mesh and tempered glass side panel of the Cooler Master NR200B. Because honestly, that's the only thing I'm interested to find out. Since I know exactly how this build performs, because essentially, I just shrunk down my current PC into this small form factor mini ITX build. By the way, to give back for your support, we're giving away one Cooler Master MM711 gaming mouse, so watch the entire video. With that being said, let's get into it. Now, this mini ITX build is a part of my long-term project of building a more minimalistic dual computer setup, partnering this with a MacBook Air M2, although that one hasn't arrived yet. And in terms of the components, let's start with the chassis. We're gonna use the Cooler Master NR200P, which honestly I think is one of the best mini ITX chassis out in the market. It is super easy to build around with a very versatile design and construction, and pretty much every component is detachable for easy access to the internals. And with the variant that we have here, we also have an optional tempered glass side panel to showcase our components. You also have the option to use either a full-sized ATX power supply or the more compact SFX version of it. The only thing that I'm missing here is a front panel USB Type-C port. Now when it comes to the motherboard, my first option was the ASUS ROG Strix X570i. However, I had a hard time looking for stock, so I just settled with the B550 version, which in my opinion is decent enough for my needs and the reason why I chose ASUS ROG aside from the fact that it's reliable with pretty much all the features that I need is that I already have an ASUS ROG Strix 3070 graphics card from my old build. Also coming from my old PC build is the processor, which is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X and the CPU cooler that I partnered it with, the Noctua NHU12A. I also have a few Noctua NFA12X 25K fans, all of which are from a previous Cooler Master TD500 mesh build, which you can watch here. Now the new components for this build are from Team Group. We have the T-Force Cardea Z44L 500GB Gen 4 NVMe for our boot drive and the T-Force Extreme 32GB 3600MHz kit for our memory. As you can tell, the T-Force Extreme RAM is absolutely glossy and looks really premium I would say. Thankfully, we have an included microfiber cloth to keep it clean. As for the T-Force Cardea Z44L, it is a budget Gen 4 NVMe with an included graphene heat spreader. Now, even though I already have an ATX version of the Cooler Master VH50 power supply, I still decided to buy the SFX version of it so that I can make sure I won't have any issues with fitting the rather chunky ASUS RG 3070 graphics card and so that I still have a substantial amount of space for cable management. Speaking of cable management, Cable Mod is kind enough to provide me with a set of custom cables that perfectly matches the theme I was going after, which we'll talk about in a moment. So I have pretty much everything that I need here, 24-pin, a couple of 8-pin PCIe cables, 8-pin and 4-pin EPS cables, and a couple of SATA cables. These are replacement cables specifically for this version of the power supply and not just extension cables. Alright, with all the components introduction out of the way, let me share with you the theme of this build. I call this the Super Brawly build featuring the Nonne Komata Super Brawly Artisan Keycap in collaboration with North Studios. I cannot express how grateful I am to Serenor of North Studios for coming up with Super Brawly which perfectly represents me as a new dad. I'm willing to do everything for my little boy and this North Super Brawly Artisan Keycap reminds me of who I can become during hard times and good times. Absolute piece of art and will forever be a part of me and my brand. Huge thanks as well to Cable Mod as not only did they provide the matching cable for the build, but they also sent a matching custom keyboard cable to top it all off. 
Alright, now let's move on to the actual build experience before I share with you some thermal benchmarks. Like I said earlier, building inside the Cooler Master NR200P is super easy. I remember my experience with the Inwin A1 Mini ITX chassis, which is an absolute pain in the butt. Not to mention the pretty bad thermal performance. But with this chassis, you can essentially detach any parts to easily build around inside. I also like the removable power supply cage making it easy to install the PSU and manage the cables. Speaking of cables, the Cooler Master NR200P has a substantial amount of space to even accommodate standard custom cables like what we have here from Cable Mod. I also appreciate that you can remove the top panel for quick and easy fan installation and you can also reuse the mounting accessory and the fan grill should you choose to use an aftermarket case fan. You don't actually need to do this since the Cooler Master NR200P already comes with two but of course we have to stick with the overall theme here. Now thankfully I didn't encounter any issues fitting the huge and chunky ASUS ROG 3070 graphics card here and it still has a good amount of space in between the bottom to take in some fresh air. To be honest I'm not that worried at all since I know for a fact that ASUS ROG 6 graphics cards are a good performer when it comes to thermals even in a very tight space. What I was worried about however is the clearance for the rather tall Noctua NHU12A CPU cooler. Using the mesh side panel there's no issue whatsoever, I can easily and securely close the side panel. However if I chose to use the tempered glass instead, it's not even possible which at this point is already a known issue and I am perfectly aware of that. Now what I did as a workaround is I used a strong neodymium new new magnet which I think is the easiest and most efficient way to do it. The only drawback is of course you'll get a slight gap here on the side. You can also 3D print spacers and what have you but again, this is the easiest workaround that I could think of. Other than that, overall, the build experience is really easy and I'm really happy with how it turned out especially with matching cables and the super brawly artwork. Speaking of being happy, I'm happy to share with you that I'm pretty satisfied with the thermal performance of the Cooler Master NR200P whether I choose to use the mesh side panel or the tempered glass. But before I show you the charts, for all of our testings here, I'm using the standard fan curve by the ASUS AI Suit 3 and I did allow the PC to substantially cool off before doing another test. As you can see here at idle, the temps for our AMD Ryzen 7 5800X for both the side panels are almost about the same and pretty much negligible. However, for some weird reason that I can't possibly explain, the temps of the ASUS ROG 3070 are significantly cooler with the tempered glass side panel and it's actually quite consistent throughout the rest of our testings as you'll see in a second. In Cinebench R23, using the 10-minute loop benchmark, the temps of the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X are 2 degrees cooler using the mesh side panel which is not really surprising. But I was happy to see that even with the tempered glass side panel, the temps are actually not that bad at all. The same can be said in 3 Mark Time Spy, the difference is only a few degrees that in reality, I wouldn't even stress myself too much, either of these is good enough for me. And as you can see, again the temps of our graphics card are a tad cooler with a tempered glass side panel. The same goes with the real-world performance exporting our standard 13-minute 4K project in Adobe Media Encoder. The difference in temps for the processor is pretty much negligible, while the temps of the graphics card are again cooler with a tempered glass side panel. And lastly, in Valorant, although our CPU is a bit hotter with a tempered glass on, again, both are really not bad at all. Of course, the same story can be said for the graphics card. Now, like I said earlier, we're giving away one Cooler Master MM711 gaming mouse and all you have to do to join is like and share this video, of course subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below your favorite part of this build with the hashtag SuperBrawly. Check the description below for more important information. Good luck guys! All in all, as I pointed out earlier, I'm happy with the thermal performance of any of the two available side panels of the Cooler Master and our 200 p Now if you want to learn more about the performance of the combination of all these components, you can just watch my video about my previous Cooler Master TD500 mesh build which shares most of the components used in this build. What's different, however, is our storage device. So here are some benchmarks for you guys for the Theme Group T-Force Cardia Z44L 500GB Gen 4 NVMe. So as you can see, no issues here. Our results match or even surpass Theme Group's own benchmark results in Crystal Disk Mark. And the important thing here is that the thermals are pretty well controlled. And here's a quick real-world file transfer speed test, transferring files between the T-Force Cardia Z44L and my external SSD which I think has an XPG SX8200 Pro NVMe inside. Honestly, 500GB is not enough for my needs, so I might add a couple more terabytes of SSD on this build. As for the T-Force Extreme 32GB, 3600MHz RAM, I also didn't encounter any issues with it. 
I just set the DOCP settings in BIOS to run it at 3600 MHz and I'm pretty much good to go. Overall, like I said, I'm super happy with how this build turned out, both in terms of how it looks and how it performs. It's definitely worth the wait and I'm excited to continue working on my long-term goal on coming up with a more minimalistic desk setup and clearing not just my desk space but my mental space as well to continue working at my best. Huge thanks to Cooler Master for providing the Cooler Master NR200P to Cable Mod for the custom cables, Noctua for the CPU cooler and case fans, to Team Group for the storage space and memory, and to Nork for the Super Broly collaboration. As for the ROG components and power supply, I purchased them myself just for a full disclaimer. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.